Hi, and welcome to day three of 12 days of single message transforms. My name is Robin Moffat. I'm a developer advocate at Confluent. So today I want to show you another single message transformation. It's part of Kafka Connect and it lets you flatten out nested payloads that you may have. So a great use for this is when you've got nested structures in your data and you want to send it downstream to a sync technology which doesn't easily support nested data. So a good example of that would be a database. You may have a bunch of data, it's got lots of nested fields and so on within it, but once you get that through to a database, databases usually want a nice flat set of fields. So that's what we're going to do here. You can follow along with the demo. It's on GitHub Demo Scene Repository. I'll put a link in the show notes. And to start off with, we're going to create ourselves some nested data as an example to use. Now, usually the data you're going to be working with, it will exist in the topic already and come in in whatever nested form it is. But for the purposes of this, we're actually going to go and create some. So even though I'm using KSQL DB here, this is just as a way of getting some nested data into a topic. The single message transformation that I'll show you, you can use that with any source data. So we're going to say, let's create ourselves a stream in KSQL DB. So this is not about KSQL DB, but since we're here, let's talk about it a little bit. KSQL DB, it lets you do stream processing on messages in Kafka. It lets you create topics and populate those topics and read from those topics. But because it's using SQL, we need to describe what the schema is so we can start to project our fields and populate data within them. So we're going to say create ourselves a stream. And a stream is just a Kafka topic, but with a schema. Create a stream. Here is my schema. We'll talk about that in a moment. Write the data to this particular topic. We're going to use Avro to serialize it. And here's the information for creating that particular topic. Give it one replica and four partitions. So that schema that I mentioned, we've got a couple of root level elements here, the ID of a customer, the full name of a customer, and then we've got a struct, we've got a nested field here holding address information. So within that address element, we've got a street, we've got a city, we've got a, a county or state and so on. So we're going to create that stream and then we're going to put some data into it. So we're going to say insert into that particular uh, stream that we created these values. So we've got uh, one and then you've got a, a made up name in this dummy data. And then we say we're going to create a struct and these are the different values in that struct. And then we're going to insert a few more rows as well and copy these into here and insert that, which means we've now got a Kafka topic. If I say show topics, we can see we've got a uh, topic here called day three customers. And what we can do now is let's try and send that down to a database. So I'm not going to use a single message transform to start with because we can actually see what happens if you try and do that. So let's come out of there and that's the name of our topic. So let's have a look at that data in the topic. So I'm going to use Kafka Cat to do that because Kafka Cat is excellent and it lets us look at all of our data. So this is the topic that we're going to look at. And it says here is the data in your topic. So you can see the key is uh, like that. And they've got the payload. So we've got the flat element here um, and we've got the address. So the, uh, the key of the uh, data that we created, this is getting way off topic, but the topic, get it? The key is uh, serialized here um, as an integer, as the key of the message. So there's, that's the first bit, that's the uh, ID we created. We've got the full name, the other root level element, the address root level but nested. So within that we've got a street, we've got a city and so on. So that's our data that we're going to try and send across into our database. So let's see what happens when we do that. We're going to clear the screen there and create ourselves a connector using the JDBC sync connector saying take data from this topic here, and fix that topic name and stream that into a database. So it's created the connector but has it worked? Let's use the Kafka Connect REST API to see if it has. Uh, we can use this call here. So this just takes the, the output of the API and pipes it through a bunch of stuff to pretty print it like this. Um, we can see we've got this sync connector here that's failed. We can ignore those other ones. That's a hangover from a previous uh, thing that I was doing. So we've got a sync here. It says the sync connector is running, but the tasks within it have failed. Let's see why they failed. So there's the name of my connector. And we're going to say, let's have a look at tasks. And this is the name of the connector. So this just gives us the status for one of those particular tasks. And it says there's a whole bunch of stuff there. 
but in amongst that stack trace. And it may actually be easier to look at the worker log here because you can see there's a whole bunch of new lines and tabs that makes this fairly unintelligible. So I'm eyeballing this and I know exactly what I'm looking for, which is this thing here, saying that we can't map a struct into the database. But let's look at it as if we didn't actually know what we were looking for. So we'd say docker logs Kafka connect. Let's go and have a look at the uh, error logs or the worker logs uh, there. And we can page up and we're going to look for error. So now we can see here's our particular connector. And we can see if we page up through that, we can see here is our error. And there's our error there. So we've got a connect exception has been thrown. And that's the actual error that we saw in the stack trace that I showed you on screen before and cheated because I knew exactly what I was looking for. But going through the worker logs, you'll see the same information, but you now get the new lines and the tabs. So it makes it easier to actually find. So it's saying I can't take a struct and write that to a database because database is going to accept a nice flat structure. So the connectors failed and we want to fix it because we want our data into that database. So now we can use our flatten single message transformation and it just looks like this. So we have the same connector as before. We're actually going to overwrite or update that existing configure, uh, connector configuration. So we're doing a put which creates it if it doesn't exist, updates it if it does. And we say take data from this particular topic exactly as before. And then we say we've got a transformation. Transformation will reference as flatten because that's as good a name as any, but we could use anything there. The type is the flatten transformation. We're applying it to the value part of the message, not the key part, but the value part. By default, it's going to use a full stop, a period character to delineate the different fields in a, in a structure. But we're going to overwrite that and use an underscore, but you don't have to. Go create that again. You'll see it's done a HTTP 200 because it's actually just updating it. It's not creating it. And if we have a look at the status of the connector again, we can see this time it says it's running, which is hopefully good news. So it's still running. It's not decided to fail. So now if we go and have a look at uh, MySQL and go into MySQL itself and say show tables, we've now got a table called day three customers. So this is the name of the topic, which is by default what it's going to pick up as the target name uh, for the table that it populates. And uh, we can say uh, select star from, and this I didn't realize, using hyphens in a table name is a really stupid idea because it uh, doesn't really like it. So you have to use a back tick and say from day three customers, and now it says, well, we've got data in there. So let's uh, describe that table, day three customers. And we can see there's our schema. So we've got full name as before. And then we've got the address and we've got the different values, but with a, uh, an underscore delineating the different fields within it. The one thing we don't have is the ID field because that's part of the, um, the key of the message. What we need to do is we need to understand how that key is being serialized. And since in our case we wrote it from case equal DB and it was a big int, we're going to use the, uh, the long converter to deserialize that in Kafka Connect. We're then going to tell the GDBC sync connector that for the primary key handling in the database, we're to use the key of the Kafka message. And then because the key itself isn't a struct, it's just a primitive value, we need to tell the sync connector what name to give that field when it creates it in the target database. So we do it like this. We've got the PK mode here is set to record key. We've got the fields, the name of the actual key that we're going to create in the target database is called ID. And then the converter we're going to use is the long converter. So we do that, it updates our connector. And if we head over to MySQL and we have a look at the uh, tables that we've got, we've got this one here, slightly different name this time. And we say, uh, describe that particular table. So day three customers. And it says there's our ID field that we specified in the sync connector and it marks it as a primary key field. So we can actually start to do upserts and stuff like that now. And then we can say select star from uh, the three customers two. And it says there is your data. So we've got the full name, the address, the address in there, and then we've got the ID value there. So that's come across from the Kafka message. So not single message transformations as such, but this is how you get the key out of a Kafka message into the target database table. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and we'll have lots more Kafka Connect, single message transform, and Apache Kafka videos for you.